in the simplest form of a Polybius square, we put a 5x5 five five grid. So we've got rows 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 across. And we have columns 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 going down. And then we simply add the alphabet in order across each of the rows as we go down. There are only 25 squares, so you will often find uncommon letters like Z left out. But in this case, we've decided to combine the letters I and J into a single square. We're then going to use pairs of numbers to identify a letter within the square. So if we were to take the letter P, then we would first of all read across. So we would find that P is on row 3. And then we would read up to where we find P and it's in 5. So that would mean that our number pair for that letter would be 35. So this time our message is going to be in numbers rather than in text. So we need to look at the numbers. Let's look at this message here. And we need to take a pair of numbers. So the first pair that we see is 2 and 3. So we go across 2 row and down 3 column. And where they join we find the letter H. So we're going to put H in as our letter there. Our next pair of numbers is 2 and 4. So we do the same thing. Where does 2 go? And 4 comes down. At this point, we're going to have to make a decision. Is this J or I? It would be more likely to be an I in that particular instance. So just put that back in again. So then we have hi. We've got space in there, so we'll leave a space. And the next pair of letters is 4 and 4. So I'd go 4 across, 4 down. And that gives me a T. So I'm going to put a T in there. And then the next pair, 23. So 2 and 3. That gives me a H again. Now if you're paying attention, you'll have seen that that 2 and 3 is the same one that we had there. So you can put another H in. After that we're looking at 1 and 5. We've now had 1 and 5 before. 1 and 5 gives us an E at that position. Then the next two letter, uh, numbers are 4 and 2. So we go across first. 4 then down 2. That gives us the letter R. And the final one is 1 and 5. We just did 1 and 5 before but if you look 1 and 5 gives us E which means that this message says, hi there. So that works well. But if everybody knows the order that these letters are going to come into our grid uh, and then intercepted those numbers, it'd be a fairly easy way of working it out. So we introduce a keyword like we did with our polyalphabetic siphon. And in this case, you can see the keyword over here is example. And what we do is we start writing example in our grid as the first letters in our grid. Now example has got two E's and on every letter can only go in once. So we don't put the second E in. So we stop at, stop at the L. And then from there on in, we go back and fill in the alphabet from any letters that haven't been used. We've already used an A. So the first letter we're going to use in here is a B. Then C and D, we've already used the E, so we don't put that in. F, G, H, I, J, K. L has already been used, so we don't put that in there. M has already been used, so we don't put that in, but N hasn't. O, P is in there, and obviously you can go on and on and on until you've got all of the letters into the square. Now this way, it's not so easy. You need to know the keyword as well as looking this up. So in this instance, if I wanted to write hi there, it would be a different set of numbers. So in this one, then my H is there, so I'd have to read across first, 3, that's in 2, so that would start off as 32, and I would be 33. So my numbers in this case are different, 32 and 33 in the previous square would have given me a different message. So we can use different keywords, again, s words that have only got the letter in once are better, but if they have got them in twice, we just ignore the second instance of the letter. And once we've put in our keyword, we then fill in the alphabet as we would normally 
but obviously missing out the words we've already used. So you've got some tasks based on using the Polybius square using keywords as well.